James again, Oaks Performance Solutions. I want to talk to you about diesel V6 Audis, Volkswagens, Porsches with boost leaks. Now these cars are getting older, a lot of them have boost leaks and I came up with a very simple solution to be able to test and see if there is a boost leak because we're getting a lot of customers with under boost codes, P0299 fault code where the charge pressure doesn't meet the request. Basically the amount of air pressure going into the engine is not high enough. So I came up with these boost leak testers, they're plumbing fittings, they're nice and easy and simple. And I have two different sizes because the diesel engines use different combinations. So we have the smaller fittings, these white ones, and then we have the bigger fittings. So there's a couple different models and the way that they get tested and I had to come up with different size fittings. The older, like 2008 to 2012 cars and SUVs, the ones with the CATA engine codes, BUG engine codes, those such engines, they use smaller charge hoses, which these fittings fit perfectly into and we have a couple different sizes for all of them we have the plug plug with a valve stem some customers find it's easier to use a tire inflator and then i have a air fitting for an airline this is a d style fitting which is the most common i happen to use these really high flow capacity ones if you look closely you can see the opening is a lot bigger than one on the right and the one on the left my air tools need a ton of air so this is what i personally use just to make my life easier so my impact guns and stuff work better customers will either get one of these for these older cars and then the choice is to get a tire valve stem or an air fitting type d if you have something else that's unique you can message us we can go get it and send you a custom invoice for it but these are the white ones for the older engines these are the gray fittings for the newer engines 2013 2017 that would be your like cnrb engine codes for the big suvs cpnb for the q5 a6 a7 the a8 uses a cpna so the later cars the suvs they need two of these because there's two hoses just like the early cars the sedans and the q5 they use one so you'd either get one of these tire valve stem or air fitting. Basically, we just loosen up the rubber hoses, put these in there, clamp them in place, and apply air pressure to them. Which I'm now going to go show you on both our Q5 and our Q7, so that way you can see the difference. So we're at our Q5. It is jacked up. Front right tire is off the ground. There's a jack stand underneath. Because the air hose you have to get to is underneath the vehicle. Basically, the air goes into the turbo and the boost goes out of the turbo, goes around. There's a metal pipe that comes out the side down here. Very hard to see in the sunlight. It comes out and the hose is accessed from the bottom. So we're gonna go to the bottom of the car, see it. This is the big charge hose right here in front of the camera. The middle pipe is up there. It should be a seven millimeter. I've already loosened this one for demonstration purposes. I can just grab this, pull it right off. They will usually not come off this easily. But as you can see, nice little seven millimeter worm clamp. Nice and oily. This thing was full of oil. That's why I have the green drain underneath. Catch all the oil that's spilled out. We put our fitting in here. Get you guys in a good spot so you can see what I'm talking about. Important note, I have the air pressure turned down in the line. I've had some people that have used these as our beta testers not turn the pressure down. We go down to like 30 PSI. Connect it to fill up with pressure. Oh, that's attached. Woo, you can tell it has a leak. Pretty good one. Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear that. I am ogling my finger around. We got a leak. This affects performance. So we're gonna take this loose. So I can already tell it's leaking right there, right in there, right where the hose goes to the intercooler. So we have a leak that we need to fix on the shop car. Oh yeah, look at that. Right in here. I can see where the hose is ripped. Right outside here. Go to the intercooler. Nice. I get to buy a new hose. Fun stuff. Anyways. I'll go to the top. With these later engines, they all look very, very similar. It's a good reference. You can tell the later 2013 to 17 engines, they have these plastic, black plastic intake manifolds. And it looks like a butterfly with a long tail going out to the side. I've seen a ton of these where they leak, especially when people want to do EGR modifications. They won't get it sealed down here on the bottom properly. It'll cause a leak. People leave these charge hoses loose. The intake manifold gaskets blow out. It's wear and tear over time. These EGRs will leak. The flap inside will get stuck halfway open instead of fully closed. So you'll get under boost coats for those you know a lot a lot of leaks especially when people just tear open the valley and they've never done it before that's gonna be one of our later videos because i have a coolant leak on this this picture was a porsche cayenne diesel and the gentleman found when he used the boost leak testers that the plastic intake manifold elbow there between the swirl flap and the anti-shutter valve had actually cracked right along the top where it was the opposite opening from the egr our best guesstimate was that the plastic had gotten heat cycled so many times that 
it actually had a small seam crack that would just leak once enough air pressure was applied to it. That was an interesting failure. He just sent me a picture of this with soapy water so you can see bubbles on top of it. I was very surprised when I saw that. Anyways, we will now switch to our Q7. Three, two, one. Bam. Before we switch to the Q7, I wanted to show you this because it's kind of funny with a massive boost leak. This thing's been running and driving absolutely wonderful. And we went very high 13s and a quarter mile of distance with the draggy. I hadn't touched that hose. It's been leaking the whole time I've been driving it. We have logs, which we'll post. This is what I see for logs. It's a very shortened view. We're looking at a quick data log of the engine RPM followed by the charge air pressure specified value or boost value that the engine computer is asking for. Followed by the other column is the charge air pressure actual value, which is the charge pressure or boost pressure that the engine is producing. In this log snippet here, we can see that the engine meets request pretty much once it gets up to say 3300 RPM. This is what our Q5 was seeing in the portion of the log that I'm showing you. It actually met the request pretty well, and that's really surprising considering it had such a nasty boost leak. The second log that I wanted to show you for the Q5, from the scan we can see that charge pressure actual value, that third column, the one that's labeled E at the top, it falls off. Once the engine RPM under the C column get up to about 3600 RPM, the charge pressure specified value stays at about 2600 HPA. That's absolute value, so manifold pressure is ambient pressure plus boost, but our actual value falls off. It goes down to by 4,400 RPMs, so we're at 2,303 HPA. So we're down about 309 HPA, that's 0.3 of a bar of boost. That's a significant drop off. I had forced the Q5 to keep commanding a higher value without any other of the controls that would stop it from doing that. So just to show that with the boost leak, the boost is falling off at higher RPMs. So that's why we're getting reduced performance. But I want to show you the measuring values here with the VCDS, just so you can see. This is what trips up a lot of owners. We're gonna go into engine, we're gonna select advanced measuring values, select engine RPMs, we'll go down, select charge pressure, specified value, actual value. Okay, so you can see engine RPMs, the engine's not running, charge pressure, specified value, 1000 HPA, actual value, 1015. Let's fire it up. We're at like a thousand RPMs. Charge pressure is slightly low, but really close. Our threshold is a lot tighter than the factory one is. I hadn't even checked this thing until today. It has major boost leak right into the intercooler. Fun stuff, just to give you some perspective. So, we're now in the Q7 engine compartment. I want to show you where the boost leak testers go for this. There's two rubber charge hoses that come off the passenger side of the engine with nice little seven millimeter hose clamps. Again, metal charge pipe, but there's two because they use parallel charge coolers on the big SUVs. Since they have more space. I need to take these loose and put the fittings in there. This is why I have the assortment of fittings here. It's one cap and either one of these two you guys would be purchasing. There's tire valve stem and then just the air fitting. I'm gonna use mine, but you would get this one instead. I also want to show you the tire valve stem. It works same way just use a tire inflator so we're gonna put you guys off to the side over here normally these hoses do not come off very easily they're kind of challenging to get off so you'll need to pick a screwdriver it helps sometimes to take this air box off it's two metal tabs here and there you gotta loosen up the hose clamp over here take mass airflow sensor loose pull the whole thing out of there get a little more room but this has come off so many times at this point that I can take these off really easily just reach over here and try not to like everything loose. So these things should just pull right off. And things go in there. We're gonna take the top one loose, take the bottom one loose. So I'm gonna put the cap in the bottom one since it's easier to get air pressure applied to the top. Just wanna make sure it's in there far enough so that way hose clamped and seal nicely. Put my airline fitting tester in there. Plug in our air hose. You should hear a little bit of air noise just from the air rushing into the system, but you shouldn't hear any major hissing noises like we did on the Q5. The charge coolers, the intercoolers down here on the sides have a bad tendency to leak for the O-rings where the hoses go into the bottom of the charge air coolers. Especially on the bigger SUVs, they leak all the time. The driver's side tends to be pretty bad about it with the lower O-ring. Looking at the top, the intake manifold was leaking, the lower one. There's the upper aluminum one on these older engines, and then there's the lower side ones. It's a plastic. Well, the gasket was leaking on the bottom. I had to take this all off, clean this all out, so that way it 
it would seal up properly so it's not leaking anymore. This picture is from the shop Q7. It's a 2012 CATA engine that had a major leak from the lower intake manifold on the driver's side or bank two. The gasket between the lower intake manifold and the cylinder head was leaking. It caused a couple issues, some weird driving parameters and things. Cruise control wouldn't work correctly. It wouldn't get the fuel economy we wanted. I applied air pressure and then sprayed soapy water down in there. was a spray nine chemical I used. But effectively, it's just soapy water. That way I could see the air bubbles escaping when I applied air pressure to it. This was just an easy visual. I could show the air was escaping with the boost leak testers on that old Q7. A lot of customers, they want to do EGR modifications. I get a lot of leaks right here where the fitting connects. A lot of times this charge hose over here likes the leak as well. Oh, that thing's filled nice and solid to the brim. I can't squeeze it. So it happens when you get 40 PSI air pressure in there. This map sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, has a lot of issues from all the oil and things that go through all the charge hoses and wear out the hoses over time. This is a common problem as well. You'll see overboost codes when that's having issues. And it usually also gets oil and nastiness on it too. It's possible to get the EGR leaking. You can find all sorts of leaks with these fittings pretty easily. We're gonna go and take that off. We're gonna put the tire valve stem fitting in there just to show the difference, but it's very, very similar. So take our air hose off. You can tell I had some pressure in there. Woohoo! Now you might be wondering why I don't advertise going up by the turbo inlet. I don't like that idea. You end up pressurizing the crankcase. I'd much rather just pressurize most of the charge system. Do it that way rather than trying to force air through all the oil. Effectively blow out all the timing chain tensioners. So now that we have the tire valve stem in there, we're gonna go use a tire gauge to apply air pressure. I've actually had customers told me they did this in a gas station parking lot and find their leaks. I went more power to you. Let's see how high I can get it. All right, that's like 15 psi. You tell. Kind of plump in there. Same idea. If you have an air compressor and air fitting, you can get a lot more pressure in there. Works out quite well. Be able to test release. Um, especially at a low cost. Just gotta make sure you don't overpressurize the system. At most, we're not going over 30 PSI. The map sensor can't read higher than that anyway. You don't need 150 compressor PSI. This picture is what I typically see when customers send me fault codes for a boost leak. I'll see a P0299 fault code for boost pressure regulation control range not reach. It'll also usually say an under boost condition. In this picture, there's a lot of data and a lot of things that were captured from the engine control unit showing what was happening when this fault Occurred. Towards the bottom of the screen, you can see there's an actual charge pressure value of 1,539 HPA. Then a little farther above that, there's a charge pressure specified value that is 2,070 HPA. So this vehicle was down about 541 HPA. So that's a lot of charge pressure. That's a little over 500 HPA. When you convert that, that's about half a bar. So we'll call it roughly about seven and a quarter PSI. This is where we tightened up the charge pressure threshold for where it'll throw a fault code because of this very circumstance. We want customers to be able to see when they have boost leaks, when there's a problem, so that way they know and they can actually go about fixing it. We tune these vehicles so that way you get better fuel economy, have better reliability, and then also performance. This is one of the criteria that we changed because we wanted the vehicles to run better. This vehicle in particular was actually accelerating get onto the highway at about 28 kilometers per hour, which that's kind of slow. That's probably, what, 15, 20 miles per hour, give or take. It was at a 98% normalized load value. So he had this thing floored. It was at 1,962.5 engine RPM. It was starting to get going. The turbo just couldn't build enough boost pressure because it had an air leak. You can actually see the charge pressure actuator values too, where it's the activation and acknowledgement. Basically, that's another term for specified and actual values. It was really high turbo actuator percentages because it's trying to build boost. And the engine just can't quite get enough boost pressure to the manifold for it to give you the performance performance you want. Obviously, this is a problem if you're merging out onto the highway or you're towing a trailer. You want the engine to get proper charge pressure. This customer ended up fixing his leak and then it ran fine and has been running great ever since then. This is just a classic example of what I typically see from my customers. This is a log of the same vehicle. He was merging out onto the highway. You can actually see there's a whole bunch of columns here going from left to right. There's engine RPMs, normalized load, engine torque. There's four columns for charge. You have charge, air, pressure, specified value, charge, air, pressure, actual value, charge, pressure, actuator, activation, and then charge, pressure, actuator, acknowledgement. Engine RPMs, load to show he's accelerating, engine torque to show how much torque the engine's making that it calculated. The specified actual charge, pressure values are right in the middle. The 
the turbo activation is at the guide vane. You can see he was idling for a little bit and then went and stepped on it pretty good to get going. In those middle columns for the charge pressure, you can see the specified value. It was asking for a good amount of charge pressure or boost pressure. And then in the actual column right next to it, it's just not building. It. At some of these points, he's off by almost 600 HPA. That's just no good at all. Towards the bottom of the screen, it's line 37. You can see it's asking for 1,822 HPA. He's at 1,119 HPA. He's over 700 HPA down from where he should be. Engine's just not building boost. That's why a lot of people think diesels are sluggish, but it's just the car needs to be repaired. The turbo guide vane actuator, it's asking for everything. It's please give me all the boost I can get. Engine's just not being responsive. I believe this gentleman ended up having the lower charge hose O-rings that weren't sealing properly, and then went and replaced the couple dollar O-rings on each side, and it worked just fine. So this last picture I'm bringing up, this fault code, we can just sit here and dissect it quite a bit. There's a lot going on with this vehicle, and the customer didn't want to fix their car. They had a ton of issues. I'm going to go over what I can see from this fault code readout just to show what an extreme example of this is and how bad this situation is. He's getting the classic P0299 under boost. Fault code for boost pressure regulation control range not reached. If you go down to about halfway in the picture, you can see engine RPM is showing an 883 slash minute. That's idle speed. The engine's idling. Normalized load values at 25.1%. They idle about there, give or take a couple percentage points depending on where it is. It's sitting idle. You can see the vehicle speed is zero kilometers per hour. It's sitting still. The car's not even moving and it's throwing this air code. Then coolant temperature is at 22 degrees Celsius. It's fairly cold. That's probably like 60, almost 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Intake air temperature, one degree Celsius. So it's just above freezing outside. This engine probably been sitting running and idle for a minute. Ambient air pressure, 780 millibar. It's hard not to get lost in units. 780 millibar is roughly about 780 HPA. One bar is a thousand millibars or a thousand HPA. Just clarify so people don't get lost in units. And conversion to the bottom, it says actual charge pressure, 512 HPA. Huh? Charge pressure is way low. It's lower than ambient. Air pressure. How are you down almost 270 HPA from ambient? Something's way off there. If you go up a couple lines, you can see it says charge air pressure specified value of 1,000 HPA, which is one bar, basically atmospheric pressure, because it's an absolute reading. Diesels don't pull vacuum at idle. They don't have throttle body. They have an anti-shutter valve. It's not even affecting anything at that point. This engine's pulling vacuum because it, it's so incredibly restricted. And it's sitting at idle. It's not even moving. It probably had just been started a few minutes prior. It's already throwing an under boost code for charge pressure, not reaching the control range. Yeah, this vehicle is just massively having issues and not functioning correctly. I like to use this as an extreme example. This car definitely had a ton of problems. So what to watch out for. Right. Hopefully that helps you guys. Nice, easy boost leak testers. Um, these will be for sale on the website. I might even consider renting them with people. That way they can go and test and make sure that they don't have any air leaks. Use them for a bit and ship them back. Thank you guys. Talk to you later.